welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time. We are still in 1981, and we're still in Zork 2. When we last left off, we made it about halfway through the game, like I said before. Uh, there was a princess and a unicorn, and we got a key, and the princess gave us a rose, which we didn't really need, and now the princess and the unicorn are having a good life together. Uh, it took us a little bit to get that uh, get the key that we needed because the princess just liked wandering off and then disappearing into nothingness. But we were able to get her back thanks to the power of restoring the save. As you can see, I've restored the save a few times here. There were a bit of spoilers, minor spoilers, uh, that I wanted to get off the screen. Uh, basically, I went a little bit further ahead and a random event happened that kind of screwed me over, so I had to reload the save. So I figured I might as well start fresh here. We are still in the gazebo, as you can see. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is exit gazebo. Remember, do not leave the gazebo. It does not work. Uh, then we're going to have to go south a couple times, back to the topiary, and then west. Uh, now we're in a dark place. We're likely to be eaten by a Gru. But we have a lantern for this. I'm just trying to conserve it. And uh, it turns out we're in the carousel room. There's most of my stuff here. I believe all of my stuff, actually. I think I dropped everything here. Uh, but I think we're all right for now. Uh, this is where things get a little weird. Uh, we're going to head south to the Meneer room. Meneers are large stones. Uh, picture like Stonehenge. Uh, one of those stones at Stonehenge is a Meneer. All right, Meneer Room. There, this is a large room which was evidently used once as a quarry. Many large limestone chunks lie helter-skelter around the room. Some are rough-hewn and unworked, others smooth and well-finished. One side of the room appears to have been used to quarry building blocks, the other to produce meneers, standing stones. Obvious passages lead north and south. One particularly large meneer, at least 20 feet tall and 8 feet thick, is lean against the wall, blocking a dark opening leading southwest. On this side of the meneer is carved an ornate letter F. Yeah, F's going to be an important letter in this game. Uh, you might have noticed the wizard when it when he did show up, uh, cast a spell starting with F. And of course, he's the wizard of Froboz, so that's two F's right there on the same character. Probably going to continue with that at some point. Uh, we just need to head south from here for now. Uh, and here we can find the stairway. A marble stairway leads down into the gloom, and a passage leads north. Now, if memory serves me correctly, you can get stuck here real quick. So uh, let's go ahead and save. Uh, we'll put our seventh save here. Um, all right, let's head down. Uh, I'll explain it as we go. This is the oddly angled room. This is a room with oddly angled walls and passages in all directions. The walls are made of some glassy substance. A marble stairway leads upward. Your sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. Now, you're probably not going to get everything to work out as quickly as you want in this room. Uh, it's oddly angled, and therefore you get lost. Um, so that, that's basically what's going to be an issue for me. We'll start by trying to go east. East or west, I'm told, will work. But we'll start with east. Uh, there's no way to go in that direction. All right, well, then let's check west. There we go. This is what I wanted to find. Oddly angled room. This is a room with oddly angled walls and passages in all directions. The walls are made of some glassy substance. That's the same. On the floor is a very small diamond-shaped window, which is flickering dimly. A long wooden club lies on the ground near the diamond-shaped window. The club is curiously burned at the thick end. Your sword is no longer glowing. Yeah, you notice that, like, the oddly angled room says it has passages in all directions, and then I tried to go a direction, and it said there was nothing that way. It's oddly angled. It's hard to tell. So this is where you're going to need to kind of think outside the box. The first thing that we're going to do is take the club. That's fine. So now we have a wooden stick and a diamond on the floor. That's basically all the clues that we're going to get about this. Uh, so if you're not a sports fan, you're probably not going to get it. But Basically, we're looking at a baseball diamond and a baseball bat. 
Now, this one's not an easy one to figure out. Uh, the way that we're going to start is head southeast. That's the way that we're going to go. Nothing has changed. Everything is the same, but we're going to keep going in a pattern here. We're going to then go northeast. Now, try to map it out in your head. Southeast, northeast. Figure out which way we're going to go next. Did you guess northwest? And then we are, it's, see, we went from d the diamond shaped window going from dimmy, dimly glowing to glowing to now glowing brightly. And now we can go southwest and we can complete the diamond on our own. We're basically running the bases here. That's what's happening. All right, you hear a strange rusty squeal echoing in the distance. And we're still in the oddly angled room. This time, though, the diamond shaped window is glowing serenely. That's new i guess i mean that's something so basically we ran the bases on the baseball diamond and that has unlocked something the only clues that you get for that is a wooden club which you're supposed to figure out is a baseball bat and a diamond on the floor which you're supposed to figure out is a baseball diamond i don't know this one seems particularly difficult and i know i'm not alone on that one but yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not necessarily a fan of it. And I'm a fan of baseball. Uh, so let's head north, I think. Um, I think that's the way I'm going to need to go. No. Let's try west. All right. There we go. It's oddly angled and the, the pathing changes from game to game. It's random. Um, but we have made it back to the marble stairway. The floor has swung down at the end of the stairway to reveal a secret passage leading down into unrelieved darkness. That does not sound good. Uh, let's head up uh, north and north back to the carousel room. We're probably going to need some stuff. Um, drop all except red sphere, blue sphere... Gold key, club, lamp, and statuette. I think that'll work. Well, all I had outside of that was the sword, so I guess that worked. Can I look at my inventory? I don't care about, like, wasting moves here. I'm carrying the club, the key, the statuette, the blue crystal sphere, and a lamp. Let's pick up the red sphere, because I didn't have that. Um... Is that everything? Hold on, let me do some counting here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so the only thing that I was missing was the red sphere. Now I have everything else. There's so much stuff in this room now. And I think I can just leave it here. Should be fine. Uh, let's head southwest from here to the cobwebby corridor. That's a room. A winding corridor is filled with cobwebs. Some are broken and the dust on the floor is disturbed. The trend of the twists and turns is northeast to southwest. On the north side of one twist, high up, is a narrow crack. There is a coil of black braided string here. That probably is going to be important, but... Um oh, I do need something else from here from the, the corridor here. Um, take uh, goodies. Take candy. You called them candied goodies, so I wanted to take the... Whatever. Um, yeah, I, I probably shouldn't have dropped everything here because now I don't remember what I needed to go the other way, but uh, we'll figure it out, I think. Um... Let me just double check a little bit here to make sure I have everything I need. I think that will do it for now. Okay. Let's head southwest back to the cobwebby corridor, southwest again uh, to the guarded room. This room is cobwebby and musty, but tracks in the dust show that it has seen visitors recently. At the south end of the room is a stained and battered, but very strong-looking door. To the north, a corridor exits. Embedded in the door is a nasty-looking lizard head with sharp teeth and beady eyes. The lizard is sniffing at you. 
I would say that's not allowed, but I mean, what am I going to do? We're going to give the candy to the lizard. The guardian greedily wolfs down the candy, including the package. It seemed to enjoy the grasshoppers particularly. It then becomes quiet and its eyes close. Lizards are known to sleep a long time while digesting their meals. Yeah, he's basically in hibernation now. We don't need to worry about him. Uh, let's unlock the door with key. And then we can... I think we can just leave it there. Open door. And then we'll go south to the wizard's workshop. We have found his home base. You are standing in the entry hall of the wizard's war workshop. Dark corridors lead west and south from here. The corridor to the west smells slightly of incense or candle smoke. The workshop door is open. Well, let's head west then. To the wizard's workroom. This room is the wizard's workroom. A hall continues east and west, and a larger room lies to the south. There are many shelves and racks on the walls, but the wizard's workbench dominates the room. It is made of dark, heavy wood bound with iron. The workbench is stained from many years of use and is deeply gouged as though some huge clawed animal was imprisoned on it. There are burn marks and even notes written in a crabbed hand. Many arcane items are scattered about the bench. Alembics, mortar and pestle, small knives of various sizes, odd scraps of vellum, wax candles, and much more. In the center of a relatively clear area of the bench are affixed three stands, ruby, sapphire, and diamond, which form a triangle. Well, we do know two of those that we need here. Uh, we can turn off the lantern for now. Let's, let's try to save that a little bit. We're going to uh, put the blue sphere on sapphire stand. I believe that will do what I need. All right, thank you. And then we'll put the red sphere on ruby stand. All right, so we got two of them, but now we have the diamond. How are we going to deal with that? We're gonna head west to the aquarium room. Here a dark hallway turns a corner. To the south is a dark room, to the east is a fitful light. Filling the northern half of the room is a huge aquarium. The aquarium contains a baby sea serpent. That doesn't sound good. Um, we're going to go ahead and throw club at the aquarium. And we've lost the baseball metaphor. <laughs> The wooden club shatters the glass wall of the aquarium, spilling out an impressive amount of salt water and wet sand. It also spills out an extremely annoyed sea serpent who bites angrily at the wooden club and then at you. He is having difficulty breathing and he seems to hold you responsible for his current problem. He tries to slither across the stone floor towards you. Fortunately, he expires mere inches away from biting off your foot. A clear crystal sphere sits amid the sand and broken glass on the bottom of the aquarium. Yeah, you have to throw the club at the aquarium. If you hit it, then you're too close and the sea serpent gets you. You have to throw it. Small things like this can ruin your day. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the clear sphere, head east, and then we are going to... Yeah, I think everything's the same. We're going to put clear sphere on diamond stand. Done. As you place the clear crystal sphere in the diamond stand, a low humming noise begins, and you can feel the hairs on the back of your neck begin to stand up. The three spheres begin to vibrate faster and faster as the noise becomes higher and higher pitched. Three puffs of smoke, one red, one blue, one white, rise from rise up from empty stands. The spheres are gone, but in the center of the triangle formed by the stands is now a black stand of obsidian in which rests a strange black sphere. Well, that sounds good. I guess we'll take the black one. And then we'll head south to the pentagram room. Oh, things are just getting better and better. We turned like red blue and white into black and now we're in a pentagram room in this room inscribed on the floor is a great pentagram drawn with black chalk in its center is a black circle i don't know about you but i can kind of put two and two together here uh put the black sphere in black circle 
A cold wind blows outward from the sphere. The candles flicker and a low moan, almost inaudible, is heard. It rises in volume and pitch until it becomes a high-pitched keening. A dim shape becomes visible in the air above the sphere. The shape resolves into a large and somewhat formidable-looking demon. He looks around, tests the walls of the pentagram experimentally, then sees you. Hmm, a new master, he says under his breath. Greetings, O master. Wouldst desire a service as our contract stateth? For some pittance of wealth, some trifle, I will gratify the des thy desires to the utmost limit of my powers, and they are not inconsiderable. He makes a pass with his massive arms, and the walls begin to shake a little. little. Another pass and the shaking stops. A nice effect. I find it f makes for a better relationship to give such a demonstration early on. He grins vilely. Hooray! We have summoned a, a demon. Uh, uh, we're we're going to wait, believe it or not. Suddenly, the wizard materializes in the room. He is astonished by what he sees. His servant in deep conversation with a common adventurer. He draws forth his wand, waves it frantically, and incants, Frobiz, Frobazel, Frobnoid. The demon laughs heartily. You no longer control the black crystal hedge, wizard. Your wand is powerless. Your doom is sealed. The demon turns to you expectantly. Yes, we have nullified the wizard's powers. That's something. Uh, we're going to give all treasure to demon. The delicate gold key, most fine, master, but tis not enough. I will do a great service. And are not great services bought at great price? Gold statuette, very nice, but not enough. All right, we're going to need more. So we're going to have to kind of deal with this. Uh, they'll stay there. So we'll head north. We'll head east. Let's turn on the lantern. We're in the wizard's workshop now. Uh, then we're going to go north twice. Yeah, this, the, the lizard is still sleeping. Uh, we're going to take the string. Might have to do this a third time. Uh, northeast from here to the carousel room. Uh, take the matchbox and newspaper. Then we're going to go north and take the brick from the marble hall. Remember, we saw that way earlier. Then we're going to go south, northwest, and then uh, we'll find ourselves in the cool room. We're going we're gonna to move around a little bit here. Uh, the room is cool and damp. The air is misty. A twisty path from the southeast splits here towards a wide northerly stone bridge and a narrow westerly tunnel. It is from the latter that the mist and chill seem to originate. I believe this is where we kind of dealt with the uh, dragon last time. Uh, from here, we want to head west to the ice room. This is definitely where we dealt with the dragon. We're going to head west again, though, to the lava room. The ice and the lava room, they're right next to each other. It's fine. This is a small room whose walls are formed by an old lava flow. There are exits here to the east and the south. On the floor lies a Moby Ruby. I should probably grab that. Let's make sure, though. Uh, no, not yet, actually. We'll head south to the volcano bottom. You are at the bottom of a large dormant volcano. High above you, light enters from the cone of the volcano. The only exit is to the north. There is a large and extremely heavy wicker basket here. An enormous cloth bag is draped over the side and is firmly attached to the basket. A metal receptacle is fastened to the center of the basket. Dangling from the basket is a piece of braided wire. So then we want to enter the basket and open the receptacle. And we're going to put the newspaper in the receptacle. Then we're going to light a match. And light the newspaper. Taken? 
I said light it. No. Okay, put newspaper in receptacle. Why did light work on match but not newspaper? Light a match. Burn the newspaper like it tells me to do. If you wish to burn the newspaper, you should say so. Burn the newspaper. The newspaper burns inside the receptacle. The cloth bag inflates as it fills with hot air. A small label drops from the bag into the basket. The match has gone out. That's fine. We probably didn't need the match anymore anyway. Then, what do we want to do next? There's so much to do. Uh, turn off the lantern. We're going to save that for a little bit. Um, I'm going to save just, just to be safe here. Just in case. Um, we're going to wait... The balloon rises slowly from the ground. A uh, volcano core in the basket. You're about 100 feet above the bottom of the volcano. The top of the volcano is clearly visible here. A cloth bag is inflated, and there is a newspaper burning in the receptacle. A braid wire is dangling over the side of the basket. The basket contains a blue label. Um, I believe I'm going to try to wait again. There should be something near me. There we go. Volcano near small ledge in the basket. You are about 200 feet above the volcano floor. Looming above is the rim of the volcano. There is a small ledge on the west side. The cloth bag is inflated and there is a newspaper burning in the receptacle. A braided wire is dangling over the side of the basket. The basket contains a blue label. All right, so we have gotten where I needed to go. Um, tie a wire to the hook. Did they tell me about the hook? They didn't tell me about the hook. There's a hook. We're going to tie the wire to the hook. You can't see any hook here. No, I have to land the balloon first. There we go. The basket comes to a stop. Narrow ledge. You're on a narrow ledge within an old dormant volcano. The ledge is about halfway between the floor below and the room above. There's an exit to the south. The cloth bag is inflated and there is a newspaper burning in the receptacle. A braided wire is dangling over the side of the basket. On the floor is a priceless gold zork mid, a valuable collector's item. There's a small hook attached to the rock here outside the basket. There we go. Now we can tie the wire to the hook. Tie wire to hook. Not tire wire tie the wire. All right, the balloon is fastened to the hook. That's probably good because we're going to need to get back on that thing at some point. We don't want it to fly away. Once we have that, uh, we're going to exit the basket. You're on your own feet again. Then we're going to get the Zork mid, head south. I need to turn on the lantern to see where I am. I'm in the library. This must have been a large library, probably for the royal family. All of the shelves have been gnawed to pieces by unfriendly gnomes. To the north is an exit. A handsome book, bound in green leather, sits in the center of the room. Right beside the purple book sits a white one. Worn and battered in one corner of the room is a blue book. Lying in the dust and covered with mold is a purple book. There's a lot of books. I don't have a lot of details about them for me either. Um, we're going to get, uh, no, we're going to open the purple book. Opening the pur purple book reveals a flathead stamp. We're going to get that stamp. That's going to be useful for us. Uh, then we're going to go north, turn a lantern off again, just to save it as much as we can. Enter the basket and untie wire. Okay, now we're going to wait. You are about 200 feet above the volcano floor. Looming above is the rim of the volcano. There's a small ledge on the west side. Um, I believe that that's where we were before. I don't think that's where I need to be. I think I need to wait again. There we go. Volcano by viewing ledge in the basket. You are high above the floor of the volcano. The rim of the volcano looks very narrow, and you are very near it. To the east is what appears to be a viewing ledge, too thin to land on. The cloth bag is inflated, and there is a newspaper burning the receptacle. Right, all the rest is the same. Now, I thought that... 
I thought that we were good here. Um, can I land? You can't land the balloon this way. All right, so we'll wait again. Maybe there's another ledge waiting for us. There we go. Volcano near wide ledge. There's three ledges. You are near the rim of the volcano above you. It is open to the sky. To the west, there is a place to land on a wide ledge. The cloth bag is inflated, and there is a newspaper burying the receptacle, etc., etc. Okay, so now we want to land on the wide ledge. The basket comes to a stop. A wide ledge in the basket. You are on a wide ledge high in the volcano. The rim of the volcano is about 200 feet above, and there is a precipitous drop to the bottom. There's a small door to the south. There's a small hook attached to the rock here outside the basket. So what we need to do is um, can I, I I don't think I can tie the hook from here. Uh, tie wire to hook. I have to do it that way. All right, I can. All right, so then we'll exit balloon. And then we'll head south to the dusty room. You are in a dusty old room which is featureless except for an exit on the north side. Embedded in the far wall is a rusty box. It appears to be somewhat damaged since an oblong hole has been chipped out of the front of it. Yeah, we're going to have to save here. Um, number nine. We're, we're probably going to have a little trouble. Okay. Put black string in brick. We're going to try that. Okay. Then we're going to put brick in wall. Embedded in the far wall. They're not going to... I have to actually say which wall it is. The one with the hole in it. Let's see. You're in a dusty old room, which is featured except for an exit on the north side. Embedded in the far wall is so put brick and south wall can i just say far wall nope put brick and south wall i think that's the wall that i need you can't do that it just embedded in the it appears since an oblong hole has been chipped out of the front of it the brick into the wall that's Put brick in hole in wall. There were too many nouns in that sentence. Put brick in hole. What, what? Okay, thank you. Apparently I just needed to say hole instead of wall and then it could figure out what I wanted. The controls, I feel like, have taken a step down since the last game. But we're, we're going to move on. We'll, we'll keep going. Uh, once we get that done, we want to light a match. And then burn... Uh, the string. The string starts to burn. The match has gone out. That's fine. Um, then we need to head north. Uh, back to the wide ledge. What does it say? It doesn't say it. a piece of wire tied to a hook holds the balloon in place. There is an explosion nearby. Yeah, we caused an explosion. So we need to get out of there before it exploded. Hence the need to save. Then we'll head south. Now we're back in the dusty room. Uh, you're in a dusty old room, which is featureless, except for an exit on the north side. On the far wall is a rusty box whose door has been blown off. The room is cluttered with debris from an explosion. The walls seem ready to collapse. The excessively grand, the excessively gaudy crown of Lord Dimwit Flathead is here. The box contains a card. All right, so we're going to have to take that take the crown and the card i'm now wearing the gaudy crown we can't just hold it we have to wear it it's the rules uh then um we're gonna head north enter basket and untie the wire you may recall that recent explosion probably as a result of it, you hear an ominous rumbling as if a nearby room has collapsed. Yeah, there's a time limit on that one. So, there we go. Uh, we're, we're going to... What do I need to do here? Um, I thought that... 
I thought we were going to head down. But... I don't... Hmm. Alright, read the card. Warning, this room was constructed over very weak rock strata. Detonation of explosions in this room is strictly prohibited for Obaz Magic Cave Company per M. Agrippa Foreman. I thought that we were going to just wait here. Okay, it, we just left. Are we still going up? I have died. Yep, all right, time passes. The balloon floats majestically out of the volcano, revealing a breathtaking view of a wooded river valley surrounded by impassable mountains. In a clearing stands a white house. You drift into high winds, which carry you towards the snow-capped peaks. Oh no, you crashed into the jagged cliffs of the Flathead Mountains. You have died. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and restore. I'm not going to be in the room of red mist. That does not sound good to me. So where was I? I was in the dusty room. Um... Inventory, where, where am I? Uh, okay, so we're going to tie, um, put string in brick, put brick in hole, now that we know what that does. Light match and burn string, head north. There's an explosion. We can head south. We're going to take the crown and card. For whatever reason, I'm told that take all does not work here. It doesn't work on the card. So you'd have to say take crown and card. Okay. So then... I feel like we should have, like, done something with the newspaper. Because I shouldn't be going north, like, up anymore. Anyway, we'll head north. Um... And then we will enter basket, untie wire. Right, then everything has collapsed in there. And then we're going to extinguish newspaper. I don't have the newspaper. It should like kind of turn off by itself. Um, I, like, I don't have the receptacle anymore, do I? Close receptacle, closed. It is now pitch black. All right, turn on lantern. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Um, but I, I don't think that was necessary. Right, everything's fine. We're still in the basket. You're near the rim of the volcano above you. is open to the sky. To the west, there is a place to land on a wide ledge. The cloth bag... And some smoke is leaking out of the closed receptacle. The braided wire is dangling over the side of the basket. The basket contains a blue label. Oh, by closing the receptacle, we have extinguished the newspaper. That was what I had missed before. Okay, so we can read the card again. Um, did I already untie the wire? No, I didn't. Uh, or I did. So then we can just wait. And there we go. The balloon is going to descend. We can read the card again. Not that it really matters. Uh, we will wait, and we're just going to keep going down and down until we are at the volcano bottom again. There we go. That's what we needed. Uh, let's go ahead and exit the basket and head north. And now we can take the Moby Ruby. That will be useful. Uh, then we can go east to the ice room, east to the cool room, North to the stone bridge, north to the dragon room, then west to the fresco room. I believe this is new. A path leads east-west through a room decorated with beautiful frescoes of someone battling dragons and rescuing fair maidens. It is hard to tell who is doing this as those parts of the frescoes have been blackened and cracked by intense heat. I don't think the dragon was a fan of those. Uh, we'll go west once more, one more to the bank entrance. This is the entrance hall of the Bank of Zork, the largest banking institution of the great underground empire. A partial account of its history is in The Lives of the Twelve Flatheads in the chapter on J. Pierpont Flathead. A more detailed history, albeit less objective, may be found in Flathead's outrageous autobiography, I'm Rich and You Aren't, So There. Most of the furniture has been ravaged by passing scavengers. All that remains are two signs at the northwest and northeast corners of the room, 
which say, viewing rooms, the way out, ornate but tasteful, is to the east. So we made it to the bank. Um, we're going to save just to be safe again. I haven't been doing too well with that, so when I save, it usually means something. Uh, this time I think it just means that I could get lost here, but there's always bad things that happen. Um, this is going to be reminiscent of the mazes that we did in the first game. You just kind of have to know the pathing. Uh, we're going to start with Northeast. That takes us to the East Teller's room. You are in a small room, which was used by a bank officer who retrieved safety deposit boxes for the customer. On the north side of the room is a sign which reads Viewing Room. On the east side of the room, above an open door, is a sign reading Bank Personnel Only. Then we will head, where do we want to head? East from here to the safety depository. This is a large rectangular room. The east and west walls were used for storing safety deposit boxes, but all have been carefully removed by evil persons. To the east, west, and south of the room are large doorways. The northern wall of the room is a shimmering curtain of light. In the center of the room is a large stone cube about 10 feet on a side. Engraved on the side of the cube is some lettering. On the ground is a small worn piece of paper. Then from here, uh, we want to head south to the chairman's office. This room was the office of the chairman of the Bank of Zork. Like the other rooms here, it has been extensively vandalized. The lone exit is to the north. A portrait of J. Pierpont Flathead hangs on the wall. Well, I'm going to take that painting. Then I'm going to head north and back to the safety depository. Uh, from here... I want to enter the shimmering light. Am I in the right spot for this? I sure am. Feel somewhat disoriented as you pass through. <laughs> sure. This is a, uh, we're in the small room. This is a small bare room with no distinguishing features. There are no exits from this room. That does not sound good. Uh, we're going to head south. No? Um... West, north, up, look. This is, there are no exits from this room. I don't think they're gonna let me out. Did I screw this up? This is why you save. Okay, so where was I? I'm in the bank entrance. So from here, I wanna go northeast, east, south, take the painting, then I want to go north. So the east and west walls were used for storing safety deposits, but all have been carefully removed by evil persons. So the east, west, and south of the room are large doorways. The northern wall of the room is a shimmering curtain of light. All right, so then um, we'll head north. There's a curtain of light there. Enter shimmering light. And you feel somewhat disoriented as you pass through. There's no exits from the small room. I'm not, hmm, because from here, like, yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem. We'll try, we'll try a different route here. Uh, northeast, east, south, take painting. This has been happening way too much. North, can I just go back? Why do I have to go this way? North, west, oh, there we go, an invisible force bars our way. Um... So then we will enter Shimmering Light. There's no... Go south from here. Wait. I don't think anything happens if I wait, but there we go. You f hear a faint door voice saying curtain door closed. So then we can head south. No? Wait again? There we go. An epicene gnome of Zurich wears a three-piece suit and carrying, wearing a three-piece suit and carrying a safety deposit box materializes in the room. You seem to have forgotten to deposit your valuables, he says, tapping the lid of the box impatiently. We don't allow customers to use the boxes here, but we can make this one exception, I suppose. He looks askance at you over his wire-wimmed bifocals. Can I go south now? 
Now hold on, I am I am thoroughly confused at this point. So let me figure out what I need to do here and I will be right back. All right, restored the save. I now know what I have to do. I was skipping a few steps and not using the right terminology to be honest. All right, so we're back at the bank entrance where I saved. So it's northeast, east, south, take the painting, then head north. Then we're going to enter the shimmering light. That, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. But here, what we're supposed to do is enter south wall. I don't just type south, I say enter south wall. And that takes me back to the safety depository. I don't know, it, that one bothers me. And then we're gonna enter the shimmering light. And we have made it to the vault, a completely different room from where we just were. Like I said, this is just kind of one of those mazes where you just have to do it the right way and hope that you figure it out. This is the vault of the Bank of Zork, in which there are no doors. On the floor sit 200 neatly stacked Zork mid bills. We will take the bills. Then, um, let me make sure I get this right here. Uh, then we will enter North Wall. Why? All right, here we'll drop the bills and a portrait. And then we will head east to the East Teller's room again. We will head east once more, back to the safety depository. I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. This whole thing just doesn't. Um, then we will take the bills and the portrait. There's a reason that we had to do it this way. Um, there's alarms and if we're carrying stuff, they get upset. So we take those two, enter shimmering light, and now we're in the east viewing room. This room was used by holders of safety deposit boxes to view their contents. On the north side of the room is a sign which says, remain here while the teller retrieves your safety deposit box. While you, when you are finished, leave the box and exit the room. Safety deposit boxes cannot be removed from this room. Thank you for banking at the Zork. Yeah, this is another one of those rooms where it just does not help. Nothing here makes sense. Uh, we're gonna head south from here. That takes us back to the bank entrance. Uh, we are going to save because I don't want to have to deal with that again. That's save number 11. Uh, from here, we are going to head east to the fresco room, east to the dragon room, south to the stone bridge, south again to the cool room, southeast to the carousel room, southwest to the cobwebby cob corridor, southwest again to the guarded room, south to the wizard's workshop, west to the wizard's workroom, and south to the pentagram room. In this room, inscribed on the floor is a great pentagram drawn with black chalk in its center is a black circle. The wizard of Froboz is here, eyeing you warily. There's a demon floating in midair here. They were here the whole time. They did not move. Give all treasure to demon. All right, portrait of J. Pierpont Flathead. Ah, oh, truly magnificent. Keep them coming. Stack of Zorkmid bills. Almost halfway there, a worthy one. Ruby, oh, such beauties. Your generosity almost overwhelms me. Gaudy crown. Truly, I shall do thee a wonderful service when thou hast finished. Flathead stamp. You Truly, you are most generous, but still this is not yet enough. Priceless Zorkmid. A fine gift, mighty one. You have almost reached my fee. The wizard looks at you as if you are a madman. He tears his beard and stares at you fearfully. Yeah, we're, we're not done. We still have some more to do. Uh, so we'll go north, east, north, northeast. No. To the guarded room. North from here to the Cabo Corridor. And north... Um, east. There we go, to the carousel room. <laughs> the directions aren't the same both ways. All right, take all. Well, I got some of it. Um, we'll drop steel box, take the violin and necklace. Okay, I don't think I need the steel box. So then from there, 
uh, we want to go southwest, southwest, south, west, south, and that takes us back here. Um, give all treasure to demon. Okay. The pearl necklace. Wondrous fine, master, but one treasure is yet to be given. The fancy violin. This will do for my fee. Tis a paltry hoard, but as you have done me a small service by losing me from this wizard, it will suffice. All right, so we finally paid his fee. That, that takes a while. All right. Demon. Kill wizard. The demon grins hideously. This has been my desire ever since this charlatan bent me to his service. I perform this deed with pleasure. The demon forms himself back into a cloud of greasy smoke. The cloud envelops the wizard, who waves his wand fruitlessly, mumbling various phrases which begin with F. A horrible scream is heard, and the smoke begins to clear. Nothing remains of the wizard but his wand. The genie departs, his agreement fulfilled. Your sword is no longer glowing. I don't think I needed the sword, but I wasn't going to go back and get it again. Okay, so we have done most of it. We have a ton of points. We have more points than moves. That's usually a good sign. Uh, let's head north, east, north, north, northeast, back to the carousel room, then south to the Meneer room. All right, one particularly large Meneer, at least 20 feet tall and 8 feet thick, is leaning against the wall block in a dark opening leading southwest. On this side of the Meneer is carved an ornate letter F. That's probably important. Oh, did I have to grab something? I don't think so. Um, inventory? Yeah, I don't have it. I think that I need to actually grab something. Yep, I, I forgot to grab the wand after all that. All right, north, southwest. 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 South. Yeah, I'm just forgetting stuff. All right, take the, the wizard's magic wand. That's going to be important. I'm going to need that. North, east, north, north, northeast, south. Let's just do the quick ones here. Okay, back here. So what we want to do is point wand at Meneer. The wand grows warm. The enormous Meneer seems to glow dimly with magical essences and you feel suffused with power. Say float. The wand glows very brightly for a moment. The Meneer floats majestically into the air, rising about 10 feet. The passage beneath it beckons invitingly. Let's head southwest into the kennel. This room looks like it was once a kennel for a very large dog. Some of the bones would fit a dinosaur. It apparently hasn't been used for a long time, as the dust is fairly thick all over. The only exit is northeast. A gigantic dog collar, large enough for three rhinoceros-sized dogs, is lying amidst the debris. Well, we're going to have to take that... Then we can head northeast, south, back to the stairway, and down to the oddly angled room. Uh, we'll head down from here to the Cerberus room. This is the entrance to a huge crypt or tomb. A marble stairway leads up from a gateway arch. There is a vicious looking dog guarding the entrance. It is more or less your usual dog, except that it has three heads and is the size of an elephant. Your sword has begun to glow very brightly. Yeah, I would imagine. So, what we want to do is put the collar on Cerberus. The creature whines happily, then the center head licks your face, which is roughly like experiencing a sandpaper washcloth. The other two heads look about, as though the monster felt a sudden need to find a pair of slippers somewhere. Its huge tail wags enthusiastically, knocking small rocks around and almost blowing you over from the breeze it creates. Hooray, we tamed the beast! Um, we're gonna head east to the crypt anteroom. The anteroom is large and empty, marble base marble bass reliefs oh it's been a long time 
uh, Marble Boss release, I believe it, it, it's pronounced, depict the stirring times and afterlife of the Flatheads, the latter a bit optimistically. The exit is to the west. A huge marble door stands to the south. The door is closed. Above the door is the cryptic inscription, Feel Free. You start as beginning is glowing with a faint blue glow. It might be base relief, marble base relief. Let's just go with that. It makes more sense to me. Either way, uh, we're going to open the door. We're going to head south to the crypt. The room contains the earthly remains of the mighty flatheads, 12 somewhat flat heads mounted securely on poles. While the room might be expected to contain funerary urns or other evidence of the ritual practices of the ancient Zorkers, it is empty of all such objects. There is writing carved on the crypt. The only apparent exit is to the north through the door to the anteroom. The, the door is open. The sword is no longer glowing. We're going to turn off the lantern. The lantern is now off. It is dark, but on the south wall is a faint outline of a rectangle, as though light were shining around the doorway. You can also make out a faintly glowing letter in the center of this area. It might be an F. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, let's open the secret door. The secret door opens noiselessly. This is your last chance if you want to save. Um... Yeah. Let's go south. And once again, everything just kind of goes so quickly that I wasn't able to read it. So I will try to find that once again. I did have 400 points at the end, which I know is uh, the maximum amount of points. I didn't catch how many moves I had, uh, but that should give me the most, uh, the highest rank for the game. So it basically crashed and sent me back out to DOS, uh, which is something that we will talk about later. Uh, but that is Zork 2. That one took me a little bit more uh, effort than the last one. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, in my modern review, because with the game now played, let's talk about how the game holds up today. I have looked up the end screen for the game. It reads, Landing. Beyond the door is a roughly hewn staircase leading down into darkness. The landing on which you stand is covered with carefully drawn magical runes like those sketched upon the workbench of the Wizard of Frobaz. These have been overlaid with sweeping green lines of enormous power which undulate back and forth across the landing. The wand begins to vibrate in harmony with the motion of the lines. You feel yourself compelled downward and you yield, stepping onto the staircase. As you pass the green lines, they flare and disappear with a burst of light, and you tumble down the staircase. At the bottom, a vast red-lit hall stretches off into the distance. Sinister statues guard the entrance to a dimly visible room far ahead. With courage and cunning, you have conquered the Wizard of Frobaz and become the master of his domain, but the final challenge awaits. The ultimate adventure concludes in Zork 3, the Dungeon Master. Playing the game today, it is of course very difficult not to immediately compare it to Zork 1. Uh, so let's talk about that just a little bit and then we'll kind of move on to Zork 2 all by itself. Um, Zork 2, I would say, is not as good for me as Zork 1. I felt that Zork 1 um, was much more of a grander adventure. Even though in this one, there was a demon, there's a wizard, um, it just felt more cramped to me somehow than uh, the original Zork 1. Maybe that's because we were kind of in like a dungeon like the entire time. Um, the controls, I mean, they're the same controls, let's be honest. They have not changed since Zork 1, but the things that we need to do with them has changed in Zork 2. And... As a result of us needing to do more complicated actions, it became harder for me to control what was happening. And there were definitely a few times that I played that I just couldn't get the phrasing right uh, to get the game to do what I wanted it to do. And that honestly is a problem. Um, oh, hi. Uh, the... Um, the wizard, I felt like, was an interesting mechanic, but at the same time, it was more aggravating than anything else. Just having this random wizard 
come along and cast a spell and who knows what it does and it could kind of doom you um and kind of screw you over and that's completely random so this is kind of a game where you just kind of have to save a lot and if you don't know what you're doing it's almost to the point of take a step save take a step save like it feels like that from time to time because of the randomness about it and frankly the the difficult puzzles that it had the oddly angled room that turned out to be a baseball diamond the carousel room that would spin you around and sometimes you didn't go where you wanted to go um the the bank stands out the those were the ones that stand out to me right now i think there was one more that i'm forgetting about um but those things were strange and aggravating from a modern perspective i would say the fact that there's a random factor to the game that makes it much more difficult for you to get through or frankly impossible for you to get through these random factors that you can't really deal with um that is a downside for me as opposed to what we saw in zork one um Obviously, ultimately, the game is essentially the same as Zork 1 in terms of graphics, in terms of sound, in terms of gameplay. Um, I would say, though, that the replayability is a little bit worse in this game because, I don't know, it just felt wrong for me to end up killing the wizard and then basically taming a beast and going to hell. Which was the ultimate goal of the game, but I'm not sure that they made that clear at all. Um, dealing with the wizard was the main goal of the entire game, uh, but it took a while for you to figure out how to do it. Th although the wizard shows up and you clearly have to do something to deal with him, it's not very apparent how to do that at all. And eventually you have to go into his workshop and summon a demon to kill him. And that's not made apparent at all. Uh, this one, I would say, is a harder game than Zork 1. And I think it does suffer a little bit as a result of that. Uh, because everything is more random. What you're trying to do is a little less um, known. Clearly, you're, you're on a treasure hunt again. Uh, but in Zork 1, they had a trophy case for you to put everything into, and that would give you points. So it became obvious, um, once you figured that out, that you needed to get all of the treasures and put them in the case. In this game, sure, you're finding stuff, but what do you do with it? I ended up dropping it in the carousel room until they were useful for me, which was much later on. And maybe I could have found that earlier, but you know, I needed to get the, the spheres in order to um, even stand a chance of figuring out how to get the demon to show up and then him asking me for stuff. Um, it's it's a weird game. Um, I would still recommend it, uh, but I would highly recommend having a guide in front of you, something that tells you what to do. I had a guide in front of me for this. I have played the game before. I've beaten the game before, but I still had the guide in front of me, and I still got lost and confused a few times in this game. And that's not necessarily a good sign, especially that bank. That one was bad. And then the, the princess, I get, you know, I let her get too far, and that um, was probably on me. When she was one room away from my sight, then she just disappears instead of actually continuing where she was supposed to be going. Uh, but the bank, I mean, they told me it was a room with no exits, but there was an exit to the south if you described it a certain way. And that's not good uh, for me. That That's not a good sign. Uh, but basically, like I said, it's a fun game. It's frustrating Keep a guide in front of you if you are going to do it. But if you're in interested in text-based adventure games, uh, this is definitely a good example of one. Definitely. It's up there. Uh, but that is my modern take on the game. At the time, Zork 2 was received well both by critics and the audience. By 1986, Zork 2 sold over 170,000 copies. While that was less than half the sales of Zork 1, that is still quite the successful game. The critics praised the game's challenge, imagination, and humor. Looking ahead, we will see more from the world of Zork in the future. 
Zork 2 will not be the final Zork game. As you might expect, that means we will talk about Infocom in the future. We will also hear from the individual programmers again. After all, there is still more code from Zork that needs to be released. And that will do it for the story of Zork 2 for now. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video where we'll take a closer look at a Japanese company.